Hey YouTube, how's it going? Yak Science here with another OCHEM video. The topic today is going to be hydrohalogenation of alkenes. Uh, and the way this mechanism works, it's kind of in the name. Well, not the mechanism, but the product. Hydro refers to hydrogen, and halogenation refers to halogen. So what we're going to be doing to an alkene, we're going to put it through an addition reaction, and we're going to add across that alkene a hydrogen and a halogen. So typically, these reactions involve H something, right? HBr, HCl, HI, etc. Okay, so let's take a look at the basic mechanism. Let's say we have an alkene, and we react it with some HBr. All right, so what's going to happen? I'm going to show you what happens first, then we'll talk about what that means in terms of regiospecificity, stereospecificity, etc. So what happens is, remember, this alkene, this pi bond is nucleophilic, and if we have it in the presence of acid, it'll, it'll get protonated. So let's draw in our HBr. This nucleophilic pi bond will grab the hydrogen, send those electrons over to Br uh, bromine, forming Br-. Remember to draw double arrows because it's acid-base chemistry. So right off the bat, I'm going to tell you that the proton, right, the hydrogen, will go to this carbon and not this carbon. If you've watched the hydration video, you'll probably get a sense of what that means in terms of regiospecificity, but we'll get into that. So what does that mean? That means our added hydrogen is here. We have a carbocation over here. But what do we have hanging around in solution? We have Br minus, right? So our Br minus, right, good nucleophile, will attack at the carbocation site, and that'll get us to our product. So I want to talk about this a little bit. Going back to the mechanism, right, I said that it protonates this carbon and not this carbon. So in terms of regiospecificity, what that means is, yes, hydrohalogenation of alkenes is regiospecific, right? Anytime you have a preference for which carbon gets protonated or where certain things go, it's regiospecific. This follows Markovnikov's rule. And if you watched the previous video, you know that Markovnikov's rule basically says that when it comes to protonating one of these carbons, you want to give the hydrogen to the lowest substituted carbon so that the carbocation is most stable. In other words, you want to generate the most stable carbocation, uh, which means you want it to have the carbocation to be on the highest substituted carbon. That's why we prefer the carbocation here, where it's tertiary, versus here, where it would be secondary. Okay? So, regiospecific, let's just write yes next to that. Now, in terms of stereospecificity, uh, we already know the answer to that, right? The fact that there's a carbocation uh, formed in the mechanism means that there's no stereospecificity. Because this bromine, remember, going back to SN1, um, anytime you have a carbocation, the nucleophile can attack from the front or the back, on top or on bottom. And so you'll get a racemic mixture. You'll get the R configuration and the S configuration, given that you have a stereocenter, right? So... In other words, the presence of the carbocation means that there is no stereospecificity for hydrohalogenation of alkenes. So let's write a no over here. And one last point that I really want to stress before we go into a couple examples is the importance of rearrangement. Anytime you have a carbocation in your mechanism, you have to look for rearrangement. Here, was there any hydride shift we could do or methyl shift that we can do? No, right? This is a tertiary carbocation. There's no way we can make it more stable. But when we do some examples, we're going to see some cases where we have to consider rearrangement. Okay, you want your carbocation uh, to be as stable as possible. So let's take a look at some examples. Okay, so here we have an alkene in a ring, and we're going to react it in the presence of hydrochloric acid, HCl. So what's going to happen? First, let's draw in our acid. We have a nucleophilic pi bond right here that can grab the hydrogen, give those electrons over to chlorine, form chloride, and now what do we have? Remember, double arrows. So now we've protonated one of these carbons. Remember, you want to protonate the carbon uh, that is less substituted so that the more substituted carbon can become the carbocation. 
Okay, so carbocation now goes here. Okay, now we have Cl minus floating around in solution. It'll attack at the carbocation site and form our products. And notice I said the plural, and that's because this carbocation yields a racemic mixture, right? So we'll have both the R and the S configuration, we'll have both enantiomers. All right, so notice the two products. Um, we have an R configuration and an S configuration. We have both enantiomers because the carbocation forms a racemic mixture. Okay, let's do one more example, this time uh, a little bit trickier. Okay, so once again, we have an alkene and we have, uh, we have it in the presence of acid. So let's see how these interact. Let's draw in our acid. Nucleophilic pi bond attacks the hydrogen, send those electrons over to bromine, and now we're here. Remember, now our carbocation is on this carbon because we protonated this carbon, Markovnikov's rule, remember that. So now we might be tempted to say, okay, we have Br- in solution, let's just attack this, and then we're done. Problem is, though, we have another option. There's a hidden hydrogen right here. Okay. So we have to think to ourselves, can we make a more stable carbocation? The answer is yes. If we move this hydrogen over here to the carbocation position, we would be creating a new carbocation, this time tertiary, which is, remember, more stable than secondary. So now we have a carbocation in a new position, this time tertiary, and now we're going to bring in our Br- for attack. Okay, it's going to attack at the carbocation site. And now we can draw our product. All right, so that's what our product would look like. Br is in the new position, remember that? And it still does follow Markovnikov's rule, and it still is not stereospecific, okay? So in, in summary, regiospecific, yes, follows Markovnikov's rule. Stereospecific, no, because you get a racemic mixture. Okay, I hope these examples were helpful, and uh, I hope this made uh, hydrohalogenation clear. Thanks for watching.